Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Be our light and scatter the darkness, and hear our evening prayer and praise. Psalm 85 You showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored Jacob. You removed the guilt of your people. You covered all their sin. You put away all your wrath. You turned from your burning anger. Restore us, O God who saves us. Put an end to your indignation with us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you extend your anger through all generations? Will you not turn and revive us, so that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and give us your salvation. I will hear what the true God the Lord will say. He indeed speaks peace to his people, to his favored ones. But do not let them turn to foolish ways. Surely his salvation is near for those who fear him, so that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Truth springs up from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give good things, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness walks in front of him. It prepares the way for his footsteps. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Numbers chapters 11 and 12. Moses went out and told the people the Lord's words. He gathered 70 men from the elders of the people and had them stand all around the tent. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him. He took from the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the seventy elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do it again. Two men, however, remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad and the name of the other was Medad. They were listed among the elders but they had not gone out to the tent. The Spirit rested on them, and they prophesied back in the camp. A young man ran and reported this to Moses. He said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aide from his youth, answered, My Lord Moses, stop them. Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? If only all of the Lord's people were prophets, so that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. They said, Has the Lord really spoken only through Moses? Hasn't he also spoken through us? The Lord heard this. Now the man Moses was very humble more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Right then the Lord spoke suddenly to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. You three, come out to the tent of meeting. The three of them came out. The Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance to the tent. He called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. He said, Now listen to my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision. In a dream I will speak with him. Not so, however, with my servant Moses. He is faithful in my whole household. With him I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? The Lord's anger burned against them, and he left. The cloud went up from above the tent, and immediately Miriam was leprous as white as snow. Aaron turned to Miriam and saw that she was leprous. Aaron said to Moses, My Lord, please do not hold this sin against us. We have acted foolishly, we have sinned. Please do not let her be like a stillborn infant that comes out of its mother's womb with its flesh half eaten away. Moses cried out to the Lord, 
God, please, heal her, please. The Lord said to Moses, If her father had merely spit in her face, would she not be disgraced for seven days? Have her confined outside of the camp for seven days, and after that she can be brought back in. Miriam was confined outside of the camp for seven days, and the people did not set out until Miriam was brought back in. Afterward, the people set out from Hadzorot and camped in the wilderness of Paran. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. The Pharisees asked Jesus when the kingdom of God would come. Jesus answered them, The kingdom of God is not coming in a way you can observe, nor will people say, Look, here it is, or Look, there it is because the kingdom of God is within you. He said to the disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. They will tell you, Look, there he is, or Look, here he is. Do not go out or chase after them, for the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning that flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other side. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking, marrying and being given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be the same on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, the person who is on the roof and has belongings in the house should not go down to get them. Likewise, the person in the field should not turn back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. I tell you, on that night there will be two people in one bed. One will be taken and the other will be left. There will be two women grinding grain at the same place. One will be taken and the other will be left. Where, Lord? they asked him. He said to them, Where the corpse is, there the vultures will be gathered. The Word of the Lord My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise made to our fathers, to Abraham and to his children forever. Amen. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.